One of the main things that I've been hoping to see more and more as we go through the course of these movies has been visual spectacle. I understand that a lot of the plot can be restrictive, so I'm really just hoping for something more visually interesting. And Chopper's Kingdom of Animals? It don't got that. So what does this movie have? Well, it has Chopper. If you want a nice Chopper movie, this is a Chopper movie. We have the Drum Island chunky version of Chopper that's easily scared of things. And throughout this entire movie, he gets a lot of screen time since this entire movie is about him. So, you know, Chopper gets some good moments. He gets some satisfying character arcs. Not much more to say. One of the weird things about watching these movies is that I don't know how much communication the crew has with Oda on these. I assume very little. And yet, while we didn't have the spectacle, we did have really weird story elements. In this movie, we get some really interesting callbacks and references to future events. And it's weird. It is like weird, weird. Like it must be my brain connecting a lot of the dots. But if you watch this movie, you're going to notice it too. Anyways, this movie is about the Straw Hats going to Crown Island because it holds treasure. As they're getting close, they get hit by a knock-up stream, getting launched into the sky, and they fly directly into Crown Island. I love this concept, perhaps because I like Jaya so much. I was immediately intrigued. Crown Island is an island with talking animals. Like, even Panda Man is here. And am I gonna have to start looking out for Panda Man in these movies? As the Straw Hats are flying through the sky, Chopper gets split off from the group and lands in the middle of all of the animals who, conveniently, have been looking for a new king and dub Chopper as their new king. I love Chopper's reaction to this information. He's like, what do you mean I'm king? I'm, I'm leaving, I got stuff to do. And he tries to ditch him, which almost would have worked, but he very quickly has to step up and try to fix the island's problems while the Straw Hats try to find him. Even though Chopper is technically the main character of this movie, and he sure takes up a lot of screen time, there's not much to gain beyond that. Like, this movie isn't a thinker movie, all right? We're not going to get a lot of literary analysis here. It's just Chopper being Chopper. All of the actual heavy lifting comes from one of the humans on this island whose parents died from pirates. And because of what happened to him, he's very protective and cautious. And throughout the movie, he has to learn to change his mentality and put his life on the line, which is starting to become a pattern with these movies. But this one has done it the best so far, so I'm not gonna judge it. Like, he's just a kid that's been stranded on an island full of talking animals. When all of the other animals give up on Chopper and reject Chopper as king, that kid has to step up and save Chopper. And if he chooses to help Chopper... He legitimately feels like he might also be excluded from the pack. That is a very strong reason for him to be worried about putting his own life on the line compared to any other character in these movies so far. As for the bad guy pirates, they're not too special. I don't think I would call them interesting as much as I would call them weird. They're weird. But I don't know, they have like a moment or two. The bad guy captain is looking for a specific type of horn that apparently grants you powers, and that's why they're going around attacking all of the animals on this island. Which, um, I guess is where the fights come in. Most of the fights are chase sequences, and that could have been dynamic, but it's not dynamic. We could have had cool chase sequences, but we didn't. <laughs> Sometimes there's like a scene that feels like it had an idea behind it. And I can say that for a lot of this movie. Like there are a lot of scenes that feel like they have an idea behind them. Like here where Nami does math on this rock and determines that you can take down all of the animals if you knock over this rock right here. Which, okay, that's not a bad idea. It's, uh, it's an idea. It shows that Nami has actual intelligence, but there's something missing about this scene that makes it not work for me. It's kind of like we have the concept there, but we don't have the budget to make these moments really shine. Chopper and Luffy both get a fight scene, but it's pretty straightforward and there's hardly any spectacle. Sanji and Zoro both get a fight, and while these aren't very visually interesting, we get Zoro fighting a kicker and Sanji fighting a swordsman. And that's cool. Like, I like the idea behind that. Yeah, the execution's not there, and I wasn't very interested in it, but Sanji and Zoro complimenting one another through their opponent is a really interesting way to show their interactions with each other. And that is probably the best part of this movie, which is kind of low on what I was expecting. So yeah, this movie's all about Chopper, if you're really desperate for more Chopper, and that's kind of the thing, right? This movie is if you want more Chopper, but I think I would rather just rewatch Drum Island Maybe look up funny Chopper moments on YouTube or something. If I wanted more Chopper, I would probably enjoy that more than this movie.